<laughs> Rip. I'm about to save you 60. Rip. Okay. Uh, one more video, maybe a couple more. We'll see. But I for sure want to watch this Linus video because the we were just talking about CPU coolers the other day, and this thumbnail is my CPU cooler. And he says almost everyone is wasting their money on CPU coolers. I bought, at the time when I bought mine, I bought the most expensive CPU cooler you could that was fan-powered. I didn't get a, a water one. But everybody always tells me mine's the best, and I spent, like, m like, the most money for a good reason because it's the best. But let's see what he has to say. I'm about to save you 60 to $100. It's this one right here. This one. This is what I have. It's so ugly. It doesn't look like cool ones, like, like these, this Cooler Master one that has RGB. But those ones are all cheaper, and they, like, don't do as good of a job. You don't need to buy that CPU cooler. I know, it sounds crazy, coming from the guy who's made more than a hundred... AIO is better. What's AIO? ...cooling your computer and recently did this and this. Ah! But if you're a gamer, like me, you don't really need any of that. If you're a numbers guy, like me, you probably want evidence to back up that claim. So, I went and got the evidence. Lots of it. We tested eight CPU coolers. I need on RGB six CPUs. In but see, that's what I'm saying. It's like this one. It looks so ugly, but it's the best out of all of them. Some of the most CPU-intensive games out there, and we are about to take a big steaming. No, <laughs> thank you. On the marketing nonsense, once and for all, to answer, how much cooling do you actually need? It's probably going to surprise you. Like the same. Of course, segue. I wanted the top so left. Oh, this. That's G AIO. Seasonic's Prime TX 1000 watt power supply features an 80 plus titanium rating, hybrid fan control, and a 12 year warranty. Check it out at the link below. While we couldn't include every cooler on the market, we did manage to cover every major form of consumer CPU cooler across. So, we wait, yeah, I've never seen one that looks like that before. Like, I've seen water cooled ones, but is this air cooled with. Oh, that's interesting. Oh no, this is a liquid cool. Okay. Consumer CPU cooler across a wide range of price points. Yeah, I ain't got we money. I didn't have money for that. Into three weight classes based on expected performance and strapped them and to a I variety mine, of CPUs that were That was just starting to come out a lot of the water cooled can be stuff. Easily extrapolated to nearby SKUs in the lineup. For example, if your cooler can handle a 13900K, then you shouldn't have any worries about a 13700K then it could be overkill for a 13600K, and so on and so forth. On the Team Red side of things, it's a bit more complex because AMD's designs can have single or multiple compute dies and different thermal ratings, even for identical core counts. So we settled on the 16 core 7950X as our worst case scenario, then we picked the 7700X for our next tier. I'm just an Intel person. You're probably wondering. I'm an why Intel guy. I don't know. X. Well, it comes down to density. And these stuff. All eight of its cores are. It's just because I learned the same Intel guy. and this brands and model numbers. Make it a very it's so different from the AMD cool. ones. Finally, we chose the top chip in AMD's lineup of super efficient 65 watt CPUs, the 7900 Non X. For our GPU, we chose the powerful and hot 3090 Ti. Yeah. This was for two reasons. One, to ensure that our CPUs were actually Same, running yeah, full I've, you tilt know, rather than just Up until bottom. recently, like and playing Sons of the Forest, I never had any issues with my computer. Or running stress tests. This is to ensure that our results will be representative of your experience at home, rather than only representative of running on an open test bench. Oh, speaking of cases, we chose the Lee and Lee Landcool 216. Its layout reflects what most PC builders are using these days, and for the sake of fairness, we needed a chassis that could handle a 360 millimeter rad in the top. This knocked out some pretty popular contenders, but it looks good and it's competitively priced at just $100. Now I know this has been a lot of background info so far, but it'll be worth it because it's gonna help you interpret the results, which I promise are coming very soon. The last thing is that for all of our testing, we used the default fan curve on our motherboard. We debated normalizing our results based on decibels, but we're still working on our sound chamber, and it's also not super representative of how most people use their PCs. That isn't to say that that's a bad way to test. It's actually an excellent way to test, and one that we will be doing in the future. But today's video is more about the big picture. Are you shopping for something like this, or something like this? 
Let's begin with our stock coolers, since the first question we need to answer is, do you need to buy a cooler at all? AMD's Wraith Prism is only included with their 65 watt chips, so we conducted all of our tests on the Ryzen 7900X. Damn, that thing's long. Switch, what the fuck? Shrugged off even our heaviest loads with 40 degrees of thermal headroom. That means that unless you're overclocking or pursuing an aesthetic or acoustic, I benefit, mean that's about any cooler. What mine is but usually the one in the box at. is pretty much throwing away money. Sometimes Intel, lower. On the other hand, okay. Ugh. Their included stock cooler couldn't even adequately cool the 13400. Ooh, yikes. Oh, yikes. Oh, shit. AMD having better stock around coolers. 30 degrees warmer than our single tower Vetru V5, and nearly 38 degrees warmer than our top performers. For reference, that's the difference between frozen water and the average high temperature in Dallas in July. And while it technically gets a pass, we didn't observe any performance dips or thermal throttling. If you're in a case that lacks airflow, or maybe you live in Dallas and it's summer, you could easily hit a thermal wall. As for Cinebench, yeah, not even close. The 13400 hits its thermal limits in under 30 seconds before dialing the clocks back to compensate. It's a small performance hit and it won't affect your FPS in games, but we also weren't impressed by its whiny acoustic properties. So in summary, if free is your only positive attribute, that's not really positive, and the aluminum might have been better used creating something that can actually stay cool. Like the 64 ounce insulated water bottle from LTTstore.com. Okay. Or one of these. The Vetru V5 managed to handle AMD's entire lineup in games with average temps 15 to 20 degrees clear of AMD's rated maximum. And the same goes for Intel is what I would say if it wasn't for the 13900K which isn't a surprise, but it is an interesting conclusion. If all you do is game- I think this one's mine. expensive single 120 millimeter tower cooler is more than enough. It doesn't sound like the model though. However, we can't say the same if you occasionally use your PC for heavily multi-threaded tasks, where our poor oh, Vetru V5 okay. struggled on everything but the Core i3-13400 and the Ryzen 7900. It's not like we saw any catastrophic performance drops thanks to the intelligent clock speed management of modern processors, but it's clear that the V5 was not designed for heavier loads and with yeah, higher temperatures. Me getting the Noctua air cooler over like an RGB one, like the RGB ones were like 30 bucks and the Noctua one was like 90. Temperatures comes more Let's see noise. If, it, if Linus so says if it's worth it. if you want more headroom or just quieter overall operation, I'd recommend looking at our middleweight contenders. This one from Deep Cool looks absolutely sick and it's water cooled, but 120 millimeter all-in-one water cooling kits carry a heavy cost burden for their size. And the LS320 comes in at double the price of its rival, the Thermalright Peerless Assassin. This dual tower cooler is- Damn, I like how he's comparing the, the water cooled ones to mine. Let's maybe go. The other options look kind of irrelevant. The Peerless Assassin managed to handle every gaming load we threw at it with ease. Nice. But unlike the Vetri V5, this powerhouse even handles all core loads on the 13600K, only failing to tame the 13900K, which it fails to tame pretty spectacularly, which seemed a bit weird. Why did this thing handle the 13600K so well, but then suddenly it's neck and neck with the Vetru when we put it on the 13900K? I mean, we'd expect there to be some difference for having two fans. You might think, well, it must have just been a fluke result from a poor mount, but nope. We reseated our coolers for every run in our testing. So what's going on? Well, the Thermaltake Peerless Assassin's towers are offset. So when we mount the cooler southpaw, there's precious little clearance with the GPU. Then in the normal configuration, we call it normal, despite the fact that there is no designated mounting direction, it results in thermal improvements that vastly exceed our expectations. Damn. We're talking more than a 10 degree difference. So if you in put it in, in the wrong way, while gaming on the 13900K, it's not going it to do as good. Like the 13900K combined with the heat dumped directly in from the flow through cooler of the 3090 was just enough to push this cooler over the edge. The good news is that no matter the configuration, the Peerless Assassin looks great on the AMD side, managing marginally higher clock speeds on the 7950X. Okay. Thanks to the extra thermal headroom over the Vetru, making it a great choice for Team Red Machines. Despite the impressive performance for our $40 cooler though, not everyone has a case that can accommodate a tower, nor does everyone enjoy the look of big stacks of metal fins. 
me personally. I love it. But Don't care. Yeah, exactly I'm not like it's. It'd be cool to bad. one day have like a really cool looking computer, but I'm not like, I'm not concerned with it looking super cool. I just I need it to function. Taste, Jacob. If I had the so money, I would have gotten one that looked super In cool, gaming, but I did not have the money for much that. Much better fight than I expected, especially on the AM5 platform but it still gets overwhelmed by the 13900K, causing a dip in gaming clock speed that, while too small to affect real-world performance, was present. All right, get at to mine point, already. It feels like we have at least part of our answer. If you're only gaming, you don't need anything more than a competent single-tower cooler. And if you mostly game, but also run the occasional overnight video encode, a basic dual-tower Yeah, tower the bomb send it. Like we'll listen to it right after this. Or if you're tight on space and flush with cash, a 120 millimeter AIO is totally a valid choice. We also know that none of the things I just said are true if you bought a 13900K or if you like to squeeze every last drop of performance out of your oh, system. Oh, thank you, Ramen. I'm gonna have to spoil something that happens later here, but it's important, so it's worth it. A Noctua NHD 15 is gonna cost you a whopping $60 more than a Peerless Assassin. And it only manages to offer a small performance benefit even on our more challenging chips. Okay. So on the surface, it sounds crazy. Yeah, I mean, okay, well, let's do it. Why would you spend over twice as much for a 1% clock speed advantage? But oh, on. damn, look at mine. When we zoom... Wait a minute. For a 1% clock speed advantage. But hold on. It's over Fine, twice as let much. Let me pause it. Um, okay. For a 1% clock speed advantage. But hold on a second. When oh, wait. we watch for a 1% clock speed advantage, but hold on a second. When we zoom out and we look at our overall build cost, that price difference becomes much smaller. Take this 13900K build that we whipped up. The extra cost of the NHD 15 is mm -hmm. about 2.3% of a, the total price. A lot, it's a lot more than other CPU coolers. Meaning that the investment in better performance, quieter operation, and lower temp seems maybe not that stupid after all. So, if the overkill camp isn't actually overkill, at least for high performance chips, let's talk about the big boys then, shall we? Corsair's flagship Elite Capellic series is available in both 240 okay. and 360 millimeter configs. Oh, and they're gonna damn, be going up fourth, I'm sorry. Do you drink a lot of water? From if you have any kind of like elderberry, take some of that. Also, if you don't have elderberry, just vitamin C. Eat some oranges if you have any vitamin C pills. Any, uh, anything it's like tea. that. It's Get a, a lot of vitamin C in here, you. Guys. The 240 millimeter. And also, you want to know something that's always helped me whenever I get sick is eating a clove of garlic. H100 then performs very well in all gaming scenarios, including on the 13900K. Nice. And Which one do even I have? I always forget. Workloads, it manages to nearly take Intel's furnace disguised as a gaming accessory to its max boost i have the i7 8700k 3.70 mm gigahertz very disappointed despite still being a two fan cooler this thing boasts substantially more surface area than the 240 millimeter red so we should see our temps improve except they don't in fact the kraken is slumming it down here with our stock cooler on the ryzen 7900 what is happening right now as it turns out, you need to install NZXT's companion software. Why would a You've never seen garlic software, in the house? Oh shit. Um, good oh, question. Oh shit. Many motherboards these days come with a header for both a CPU fan and Damn, for a pump. They are vampires. Not to mention that even if they didn't, you could still run a pump off of a PWM header or even just directly oh, the off the power supply. No problem. What was it but showing in the name that? of RGB purdiness, many AIOs do connect to the system via a USB header. That's not inherently bad, except that, that NZXT oh, from configures Shatterino. their coolers oh, to run in silent mode by default, meaning that if you neglect to use their CAM software, you could be getting shockingly poor performance without realizing it. If you do install CAM, however, it handles games as well as you'd expect with no performance hits. A hundred and three? Even on the 13900K can overwhelm it. Oh Which shit, dude, get some like cool like uh, washcloths, like some well. ice packs or it's something. Put that shit on your head. Intel saw fit to not only That'll help out. This monster, 
but create an even We could skip fire. out on Elden Ring tonight. What we don't got to play later. Just feel better, man. Coolers are they using on them in the Unless rest? you still do want to play it later, but if you're heavy. not feeling good enough, Noctua we'll, we'll put that off for a couple days. continues to prove that it is an absolute monster, even after all these years. This is the cooler that we use in our internal hardware testing, and for good reason. It keeps up. We'll see. Okay, Not yeah, just you keep me posted. Let me know. Sharing the lowest temps in gaming across so gonna, We're going to hop into some Fortnite, but, but then I was planning on we'll do some Elden Ring, but if not, no worries. This dual tower behemoth takes pretty much anything you yeah, can Yeah, that's throw. what it seems like. It like I was saying, like, I don't know I don't know what you're doing, but like, it doesn't seem like you're going out and hanging out with people. Like, uh, maybe somebody, like I said, maybe somebody brought it home. Blues. I don't know. And it's cheaper than many AIO heavyweight water coolers. Wait, did you wear like a jacket or anything? The other night you went on a night ride, didn't you? And wasn't it cold? Did you wear a jacket? What happened there? You go as far as to say, if you're Oh, here, we're into mine now. Air cooling heavyweight. The Noctua NHD15 continues to prove that it is an absolute monster. Even Let's go! These years. Correct purchase. This is the cooler that we use in our internal hardware testing and for good reason. Let's go! Keep Let's go! Keeps up. Not only is it routinely sharing the lowest temps in gaming across our entire suite, Og. but even an extended all-core work. Oh, you had like four jackets on? Fuck. Takes pretty much anything you can throw at it. It just doesn't lose. And it's cheaper than many AIO heavyweight water coolers. I mean, we'd go as far as to say, if your case fits it, it is a better buy than any all-in-one water cooler. Oh! Why? Well, first, no special software required to make it run its best. Oh! And second, and perhaps more importantly, no pump. If the pump in your AIO bites the dust after your warranty period has expired, you are completely SOL and you will need to replace the entire cooler. If your fan dies though, that's a fast, cheap replacement. Yep, you just buy a new so fan. Of thumb, yep. we recommend air whenever possible. But what if you're in a small form factor system? Sadly, due to the why Yeah, that's the thing. Is this barely fits in my case? Here, let me show you guys. Like you can see right here, the cooler is like right up against it. Okay, so there's like a little bit of room. Like right there. varying shapes and configurations of small form factor cases testing cooling performance in a general so yeah, if you have a smaller case really it's not going to fit but we still wanted to check out how the super low profile L9 and when you go to build these on like pc part picker it'll in most cases will tell you like we're not sure if it's going to fit l9i from noctua affairs just to kind of see what we could get away with on the 7950x then our hottest amd chip the l9a manages to barely make it under the line yep. in gaming loads yep Though it has precious big ass handling, holes in the we'll side, yeah. Moment on all core workloads, the L9A struggles with clocks dropping well below spec on the 7950. Though it does put up a pretty impressive fight on the 7700X, even if you can see clock speeds trending downward over time. On the Intel side, things are not so great. It's just not even relevant on the 13900K. And even gaming loads on the 13600K are proving to be a bit too much for this. Oh, cooler. yeah, looks nice on for top sure. Of that, you need to take looks these nice. results with a giant grain of salt because your poor low profile cooler is also likely to be operating in suboptimal conditions. But damn, do I feel good about my purchase four years later? Small form factor case. So then, what do we recommend? Well, if we flip our data and go by CPU, we can see that if you're on AMD, a single tower cooler is gonna cover you for gaming. And if you want to also use your PC for work, or if you can afford the top end 7950X, the Assassin is pretty much your entry level. Everything else is an extravagant gift then for your ears. As for the Intel side of things, stock cooler on the 13400 or a small tower cooler. And on the 13600K, it's tower cooler or Assassin. 13900K, we'd recommend installing prayers or a 240 millimeter plus rad or a premium tower cooler. Now in time, our intention is to refine our testing methodologies and build a database of results just like this. But on damn, the even he website. said but the now, Noctua, the one I have is the one they the use for their now. testing stuff. Get on out of here, you scamp. And Let's spend go. that money you saved on something that will keep you cool. Like I said, like when I first built the your... computer, there was no CPU cooler in it. The person that built it didn't put one in. We didn't even know we needed to buy that. And then I went to go like install things. And I tried to play GTA. And it was like, I couldn't play it. It was just, it was like one frame per second, less than that. And I, I was like, what is wrong with my computer? And then I learned, oh, I need a CPU cooler. 
about like two days of research, I was like, I think this Noctua one's the best. Your friends. And Must be nice I'm glad I got that. I don't. But I do have our sponsor. Backblaze. Backblaze is an affordable and easy to use cloud backup solution. It's not even in a case yet because of how big it is, they right? They make it simple by allowing you to backup almost anything from your Mac or your PC. But they're like most cases will fit. Their web and it's just if you're getting a real small you can case, then it's not. Also, protect business data through a centrally managed admin. But PC Backblaze part picker will like still anytime I build a computer with that that fan, a lot of the cases like we're not sure if it's gonna fit. Then lets you restore your data by mail. They will ship a hard drive with your data right to your door, and when you're done, you can return the hard drive for a refund. And if you're oh, worried about nice, Mr. Busket, let's files, go. You can increase your retention history to a year for just an extra two dollars a month. With over 55 billion files restored and two exabytes of data under their management, Backblaze has watched the okay. I'll watch they the volume. Okay. Covered. We actually back up our service to Backblaze every night. So. Sign up and get a free. They have an all black one. With no credit card required. Oh, that would have looked today. way better in my build. Slash I didn't know they had an all black one. If you enjoyed one. this video, why don't you check out our video on another category? Okay. Cool. I feel good about my purchase. Glad I watched that. Um. Okay. Let's listen to this beat that the bomb made. Let me turn. Make sure the volume's down.